I'm taking a look at the Originality, Ingenuity, Value Overalls, IV P5211B DualSense Charging Cradle. At less than $20, it's about as cheap as it gets. Now this one doesn't come with an AC adapter. It is powered by a USB-C connector. Well, let's see what's inside. Cables. Warranty card. Do you really think they would love to hear from me? Cradle and some more paperwork. QA card. I feel much better now. Little instruction pamphlet. Kind of explains how to use it. Gives some of the specifications. Two cables. One the dual USB-A to USB-C. That is just for the PS5, I think. The other... USB-C to USB-C. The cradle feels pretty nice, heavier than I would have thought. Four pogo pins for each controller. About 0.1 inch of travel for the pins. USB-C connector and on and off switch on the back. Fancy display showing two controllers. Controller fits on pretty easy. And by not having to use the USB connector on the controller for charging, should hopefully extend the life of that USB connector. Indicator turns red and blue line slowly pulses, or as the package says, breathes, when charging the controller. That's going to work nice. We'll need a USB charger that can put out the full 15 watts, but that's going to work. Thumbs up. Well, let's take a look inside. Four small Phillips screws look to hold the case together. Plastic lens, that's what gives the blue lines from the top. Display board just sets in a groove. And the power board is held in place with three screws. And there's the weight. They may be planning on different color combos. The power board appears to be a two-sided PC board. Looks like a small switching regulator. I wonder if the 4-pin connection on the DualSense controller needs more or less voltage than what the USB supplies. The indicator lens just snaps on the display PC board. Pretty simple display board. Each pogo pin board is held in place by one screw. And the screws that hold the board in place are a little shorter than all the other screws. The pin boards have what looks like one resistor on them. The pins look like brass. I can't tell if the tips are gold plated or not. Doesn't really look like it. 
so may have to clean the pogo pins every so often. I have to say, that is more than I was expecting to be inside the thing. Curiosity does need to be satisfied, so I drew up some diagrams. So I'll start with the pogo pin boards. The board has four pins and one 5.6K ohm resistor on it. There are two wires that supply the board with a voltage of about 5.3 volts. One pin has no connection and one pin is tied to the 5.6K resistor pulling up that contact on the controller. So the connection to the DualSense controller looks something like this. Now the display board. There are two red LEDs and 11 blue LEDs. These are the LEDs for the breathing blue outline. These are the LEDs for the red and blue controller indicators. And this one is part of the blue lighting for the lens that outlines the top. The current to each controller is sensed across a 27 mil ohm resistor that's in the ground lead to each of the pogo pin boards. There are no markings on U1. I would suspect it's a low-end microcontroller, but there are no in-circuit programming terminals, so maybe it's some kind of dual channel current sense IC. It doesn't look like markings have been removed off the IC, so if someone out there takes theirs apart and this IC has a number on it, or if it's also blank, could drop a comment on it, would be nice to know. One thing to note, the LEDs have their own B plus power line. The breathing blue is from the pulse width modulation signal on pin 7. The signal looks like this. So a 10 kHz PWM signal drives Q1, which controls 8 of the blue LEDs. And that's about it for the display board. The power board is for the most part a small boost regulator. Power comes in from the USB-C connector, goes through a 4 amp fuse, and then branches into two paths. It turns out the switch does not turn off the device, it just turns off the LEDs. Which I kinda wish a few other items I have had a switch to disable the lights on them. So that's a nice touch. These two LEDs here are part of the three LED set that creates the blue line seen from the top of the charging cradle. The boost regulator IC can output 2 amps with an input voltage of 3.3 or higher. Even with a really long USB cable, I wouldn't think the voltage would drop anywhere near that low. Well, maybe with a really cheap made cable. Here with about 4.5 volts input, it did fine at supplying 1.2 amps and the boost IC is barely warm. Here's the waveform on the switch terminal of the regulator IC. At a very light load, looks pretty clean and at 1.2 MHz to boot. So the B plus supply line is set to output 5.3 volts, really just a little above what should be coming in on the USB connector. Now the DualSense controller will charge off of its USB connector. Is this boost regulator here because the drop for charging two controllers is just too much for maybe some USB cables? Or do the back charging pins on the DualSense require a higher voltage? I don't know. For the low cost of this thing, I was really expecting the USB VBUS lines to go straight to the DualSense controller contacts. With four terminals on the controller, I thought one of them would be a charging or charge signal but this doesn't use any signal from the controller at all. It just boosts the input voltage a bit and senses whether the controller is pulling current or not. There is no voltage clamp on the B plus line going to the controllers. So if something were to go wrong with the boost regulator circuit, either the IC or either feedback resistor, that could produce an over voltage problem. I may see if I can find a TVS or a large Zener diode to install for a bit of protection. After all, those dual sense controllers are kinda expensive. That's the only negative thing I've seen on the device. For the money, I don't think can do much better. I like it. I like the fact that it can turn off the lights. 
I don't think the instructions made it clear that the switch is just for the LEDs, but if I want it off, I'll just have to unplug it. Thank you for watching.